black girls in my area cold Dark skin, light skin, medium tones Permitting braids, got mini afros Thick lips, got hips, some of us don't Big nose contour, some of us won't Never won When you see this face in this bonnet You know what's going on <laughs> Sorry guys, it's like 2am Trying to find some energy Give y'all some pump Make these videos a little more interesting For those of y'all that are like, dang All you do is wig videos well, all you do is watch my wig videos because you're still here now. Uh -huh. Okay. What's up, y'all? It's good. It's, it's popping. I'm stuttering. What's good? What's popping? It's your girl, Caroline. Back again with another wig video. And today's wig... I don't know what today's wig is. Hold on. Let me grab today's wig. Un momento, por favor. Uno momento, por favor. Okay. Got the wig. Today we're working on this wig from Ali Bonnie Hair. So we got... Okay, okay, okay. I never show like the products in it because at this point I'm convinced these products like they include are just like PR. It could be included, it couldn't be, but y'all don't really care about that. If you do, comment down below. I'll show it if you care. I feel like I never care. I just want to see the hair. So this is a 30 inch wig. I believe it's some type of curly texture, loose, deep, deep wave. One of those. Let's see, let's see. I think it's a loose deep wave the way it has these little springy curls on it and this is a fronter oh i love that look at all that parting space dang good i see you so she got a lot of parting and it's a 13 by 4 13 by 6. this is a 13 by 4 i'm impressed i'm honestly it's very seldom where i see 13 by 4 wigs that have the full four inch parting on the side like girl oh, i'm doing a side part with her here's how we're looking 30 inches loose deep wave i always get so sad when the curls come like this like you know pre-processed like this because i know once i wash it this is how the curls don't look but they're fun they're cute but i gotta wash it to you know do all the plucking and bleaching but anyways let's get into our install so here's a little before action without any customization how the wig would look. I feel like they dyed it jet black because it's very dark. Very dark. Oh, she's dark. Dang. Okay. Um, so here's how it looks. It's slightly pre-plucked on the hairline. The hairline's not too thick, but I'm still going to pluck it because that's what I do. Um, definitely will be having to bleach these knots. On the bright side though, the knots are like small and not super tiny so they shouldn't be too hard to bleach we hope let's get into our let me be serious so um yeah let's get into our not bleaching portion all right we've got the bleaching squad here with us got the creamy crack jk that's relaxer but might as well be bw powder classic love her standard and i'm mixing this with a 40 volume developer see i've been using 20 for like a couple of my last videos if you notice but i feel like 20 volume develop my i'm so sorry i've tried using 20 volume developer for all you guys are asking me if you can use 20 and my answer to y'all nah i mean yes but for me nah 20 volume developer it does work it will lift my knots but doesn't give me that like invisible knot look that i'm going for so i feel like use 40 she's your bestie she loves you but if you're a little bit scared or want to go something a little more gentler use 30 20 it works that's all you have but i don't think it's gonna be as effective and it just doesn't bleach the knots to the light shade that i'm going for 40 she's my girl once you go 40 you never go back okay now i'm just gonna use one scoop maybe a little bit more because this frontal got some space that and like I always say, you want to pour this developer in slowly because the mixture gets runny real fast. I feel like I've been doing this for a minute, so I can kind of like pour more. But let me not get too confident and make myself a runny mixture. Mixy, 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 mixy. And so it turns into a nice little creamy, icing-like consistency. Honestly, I'm going to get my mixing brush. It's more easier to mixing brush. Okay. See? Now I can add a little bit more. I don't want to get too cocky and start spilling a lot in there because it's not a one-to-one -one ratio okay i don't know what ratio it is but it's not one-to-one mixy -one. mixy 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 i 
Let's make sure I mix it all in. Okay. I like making my mixture now a bit more thicker than before because I hate when it bleeds through. It's such an annoying thing to have to fix. But this is a pretty good, good for me. It's nice and creamy, like some thick, not like thick, but like, you know, some refrigerated icing, I guess, if you ever, if you're an icing eater. It's still spreadable and creamy, but at the same time, it's not dripping off. Y'all see that? Yeah. That's what I like. And I do like, recently started using a popsicle stick, a wooden stick. It's from like my waxing sticks. So I like to use these to help spread the solution. I'm just going to spray a little bit of some hairspray on the front. This is just to help me push the hair back. The last thing I want is to get bleach on the front of the hair. Push that back. Make sure everything is nice and back. Yeah. Okay. So, got her face down. <laughs> Here's it. <laughs> See, told y'all, I get weird at night. Okay. Gonna go in and then we'll just, you know, start to apply our bleach. See that? Nice and creamy, but also not drippy. Okay, now we are back. Got me. Oh my god. Mm -mm. Like, for some reason, I love how this happened. There was hair dye on this piece of foil. But, anyways, I'm just gonna gently fold this up and place this foil gently. I do mean gently. Sometimes, even this part can cause you to over push the bleach. So, I'm gonna come back every 10 minutes to check how the knots are. I never give y'all a time on how long to let your knots process because every wig is different. Just keep coming back every 10 minutes. Don't you walk away and forget about it because I have done that. Literally, I tell Alexa, Alexa, set a 10 minute timer. 10 minutes! Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that just sit and chill and we'll keep checking back. Usually about 30 minutes is good, but sometimes it needs less, sometimes it needs more. Okay. Real close though, y'all can see the knots in the bottom, real nice and black. We're going for a yellowish kind of color. The knots in the back are already processing a little bit, you can't see that, but yeah. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see, but it's been literally only 10 minutes and the hair is now about a like it's more of a brown color so i feel like this wig in another 10 to 15 minutes will be ready so all right and that's why i say keep a timer because it's already lifting it's only been 10 minutes any more than 20 to 25 this wig would be a goner so yeah I'll be back another 10. Alexa, send me another 10 minute timer. Okay, it hasn't even been a full 20 minutes yet. I think it's like 18-ish minutes. And y'all see a little like yellowish, yellow, orange kind of color? I'm gonna go ahead and cut this and wash this out now. Cause one time I left my, I don't know what kind of hair it was. <clears throat> Cause one time I learned my lesson after letting bleach sit on my frontal for too long. It wasn't even an hour, y'all. It was like 45 minutes, and the frontal started to shed as I was watching washing it. So be careful with this bleach. Once you start to see it lift, just go ahead and stop it. This is how the lace was looking after I washed out the bleach with a neutralizing shampoo. And as you can see, she's giving very much Donald Trump, very much orange. And I felt like I could have low-key let the bleach sit a bit longer, but I'm telling y'all I'm traumatized after I let my bleach sit for too long and the hair started shedding in front of me. To be honest, I did let the front process a little bit too long because the front knots were very, very delicate after this process and I was getting a little bit of shedding in the front. So do keep in mind shedding from your frontal could be a result of bleaching for too long. Anyways, so to help me fix the over orangey tone of the wig, 
I now do a two-step wig, I mean lace toning process. Instead of just using the standard shimmer lights that we all know, I now go in with a blue and a purple shampoo. The reason why I use the blue is because the blue helps cancel out that orange color and then I use a purple shampoo after and purple helps cancel out yellow tones. I got these shampoos both from Amazon. Um, they came together in a set and they work really well and they help give me a very neutral lace like you'll see after I do these two steps. First I'm going in with that blue pigmented shampoo and I'm using a very generous amount and I'm letting this just lather and make sure it's sitting on the bottom of the lace because it's mainly for the knots of course so I'm really making sure I'm pushing that blue pigment through the bottom of the lace to get onto the knots and then after I've done that I go ahead and just scrub it through to get a nice lather going on and I let that sit for about 10 minutes then I come back wash that out and I do the same thing with the purple shampoo to help get away get rid of any yellow tones that are left after getting rid of the orange tones Here is a before and after shot of the toned knots you see before, very orange and right here on the right it is more toned and neutral, giving very much scalp. So after I've done that I just went ahead and washed the rest of the actual hair with just a moisturizing shampoo and I let it condition for a few minutes as well. And then I just let the hair out dry. Hair I'm sorry, I'm getting all tongue tied. I let the hair air dry overnight so I can go ahead and pluck it. Here we are the next day. The hair has fully air dried. I prefer to pluck my hair while it is dry because this way I can see the full density of the hair because whenever I'm plucking when it's wet, I can never tell if the hair is over plucked or if it's just right. I always end up having to pluck more because whenever it's wet. That's why I prefer to pluck dry because I can tell exactly if it's over plucked or you know if it's just right. So now what I'm doing real quick is I'm going in with my very very hot hot comb and I'm just trying to push back that hairline so I can see exactly what I'm working with. The wig was slightly pre-plucked in the front as you guys can see. You could honestly go ahead and install the wig just like this without doing the plucking because it was very well pre-plucked in my opinion. But you know me, I like to strive for, protect, for perfection, so I still went ahead and did the plucking anyways. Once I made sure the hair was all the way pushed back and the hairline was very much visible, I pulled out the pre-pluck section in the front. Regardless if the hair is pre-plucked or not, I always like to start plucking behind the hairline. This just helps prevent me from, you know, over-plucking in the front or just over-plucking what's going to be my baby hairs later in the future. Here's a tweezer I'm going to be using. I use a very specific tweezer and this tweezer only. It is the Revlon Slant Tip Diamond Series tweezer. I will link it down below. I love it. It gets all the hair without also ripping a massive hole in my lace. Sometimes when I'm getting holes in my lace, it's really just because my tweezer is too sharp and or I'm applying too much pressure. Now when it comes to my plucking, I find a hard time to explain it, but literally what I'm doing is I'm going in a dragging back motion with my tweezer. I'm not pulling the hair upwards, I'm dragging it back. And I literally go pluck a line, skip a line, pluck a line, skip a line. I am trying to create little gaps in between each line of hair, if that makes sense. I do not pluck in the same spot as well, that's how you create a big bald spot. Now if you look closely, my tweezer is no longer plucking in the front line like it was earlier. I've now taken my tweezer to the back of the hairline and I start thinning out the hair towards the back. It's important to make sure you are thinning out the hair in the back as well. That's how you get a very natural installed plucked look because when you pluck just the front, it looks too thick in the back and you know, you understand how this goes. If you guys also look closely, you'll see little tiny um, blonde roots coming up as I'm plucking because I am making sure I am plucking the hair from the root. 
you're not just plucking the hair on top make sure you're pulling out that actual knot that's why having small knots in your frontal is important because sometimes the knots are too big you might end up pulling out a hole but i always try to make sure i'm pulling the hair from the root and this is what gives me a very clean freshly plucked type of look I'm going to go ahead and just continue plucking this side of the wig and I'm not going to fast forward these clips so you guys can visually at a real time speed see exactly what I'm doing and hopefully this kind of helps you on your plucking you know, journey. Once I was done completely plucking this side behind the hairline, I went ahead and just, you know, combed the hair in the front back to the front, used my hot comb to help clean up everything and push everything back again. It's really important to make sure you're using this hot comb, mousse, whatever, anything to help you pull back that hairline so you can see exactly what's going on. And plus having the hairline pulled back by plucking gives you a much more neater, clean finish. But anywho. Once I've done that, I'm just going to go ahead and do like a very minimal pluck in the front. Like I'm not going to pluck too much in the front because it's already been pre-plucked out for me. If you see any plucking, mainly it's me just kind of going back into the hairline because sometimes when I pull the hair all the way to the front, I can see where it exactly needs more thinning out or needs a gap there. okay hi guys now kind of stole this wig it's the next day Ugh, plucked the wig this morning like i'm sure y'all start earlier and here she is this wig i'm so excited to install it i feel like i'm about to eat plucking came out good 
bleaching actually came out much better than I thought it would. Um, the hair is really long. You see what I mean about the curls dropping once you wash it? Like literally now it's exactly what it's supposed to be, more of a loose wave, but I think I want to put crimps in it and I feel like I have to do a side part since this is definitely giving all the space you need on the frontal. But um, yeah, let's get into install. Now, I'm hoping this install takes me up three hours. But let's be honest, it always takes me longer, but let's be optimistic, okay? Got my snack, got us some fruit and a lime, cause lime, honestly eating limes gives me energy. Just drink my tea to give me that energy. I'm preparing for the long haul, okay? I think first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tint this lace. So that way it can be a good match. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be transparent or HD. It kind of looks like HD lace in my opinion, but we'll see. Okay, I literally got back from the store just getting this. I'm gonna tint my lace with this e.l.f. concealer. Will she focus? Does she want to focus? There you go. With this e.l.f. concealer. I had to run to the store real quick, hence the bucket hat, to grab a darker shade because <laughs> The girl's got a tan of this summer, and I have the shade Rich Chocolate. I hope this is a good one to match my skin tone. Let's see. Um, I feel like this might be a little bit too dark. Let's blend it up on my forehead, actually. Actually, no. Yeah, it's a pretty spot-on match, okay? Cool. I think it's a good match. Let's wait. I'm going to wait for it to dry down. You know what? YOLO. I'm just going to try it. Hopefully it doesn't end up being too dark on my head. But I'm going to get a good little scoop of that. No, I feel like it's going to be too dark. Is it? I'm scared. I'm scared. Okay, I also picked up this Maybelline Fit Me Foundation. And I got, I wasn't sure which shade made better match for me because this is my summer shade. And I got this one in the shade Warm Cappuccino. So let's see which one's gonna look better. Mm, I think maybe Warm Cappuccino. Yeah, I think that's a better match for me. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna actually use, I'm gonna use Warm Cappuccino because this one seems a little bit too red. Warm Cappuccino is like more neutral. Before I do that, let me put on a wig cap. And if you know, you know, I literally only wear my wig caps just to protect my braids from getting caught in the comb. So I like to make sure I push it nice and far back so it's not out here peeking under my wig. All right, a wig is on. We are ready to install. So I'm just gonna probably start doing voiceovers from this part on, cause honestly, I need to focus. These big installs take 100% of my mental ability. No way. My voiceover Caroline, she's cute, she's friendly, she got y'all. But let's get into this install. I am going to be listening to a podcast and it's. I'm a podcast. I love a good podcast, and I'm gonna be listening to this podcast called Horrible Decisions. It's super funny. It's one of those like sex talk podcasts. So if you're not 18, I didn't send you. But if you are, you love a little bit of tea. It's really good. Let's do this. I have to hide myself up because. Yeah. Howdy. So the first thing I am doing before laying down my lace, I'm just going in with my scissors to help me part around the space on my ear. And I literally just use the comb and just try to feel for where my ear starts and stops and I just part that out and to help me make sure I don't cut too much I always cut a little bit less hair than when I actually part it out and yeah so I just go ahead and cut more like an upside down U or N right a lowercase N around my ear and I go ahead and do the same thing on the other side less is more so that way if you end up cutting it you know a little bit too less you can go back and cut more and adjust until you make sure you get a perfect fit around your ear
help me lay down my lace, I'm using the Ebon Wonder Lace Spray. This is a glueless spray, meaning that it, it, it will come off with water. It's a temporary hold. And I like using this because it's safe on my edges. And personally, I don't sleep in my wigs. So this works just perfectly for me. I'm going in with this and I'm just using my fingers to lightly help spread the product around. And to help everything just dry, I'm using my blow dryer on a cool heat setting. I use a cool heat setting because this lets the lace dry fast, but at the same time, not too fast. I've noticed using a high heat starts, it makes the spray start to get too sticky too fast. I'm just going in and using that comb to really make sure I'm pressing down the lace and the hair and getting everything nice and melted into my scalp. This is not sped up, so I'll just let you guys see how long I do use the blow dryer on the hair before I proceed to cut the lace. Once this section of hair has been dried, well I thought it was dry, I'm using these cuticle scissors to help cut off my side tap region. I do the side I first have because it has the hardest time getting my laying side down. tabs to lay down. I ended up cutting the section of lace because I have like my side burns down there so it doesn't stick that well to hair. Down so I always areas. have to kind of use like the spray twice on the section. And you can see right here so the lace I started to lift because it didn't stick on the first try. It's to okay help the lace doesn't stick on the first try because it's really difficult. And to help everything stick down a bit more, I'm just pulling out the side burn hair. And I'm going to pull down on the gently to help get it to stick a lot better is I'm just going to Back in out with that Ebon side spray baby hair spray in between and I'm just trying to and really get all those out and help it down work as it gets stuck. away. I'm gonna pull down on those hairs gently and go in with that Ebon lace spray again and spray in between the lace and the hair and just use a blow dryer again and the hot I mean not the hot comb and the um, rat tail comb and just repeat this step until I can feel the lace literally start to stick. I find that the reason why it's having a hard time sticking, especially for me on my side burns, is because I do have my actual hair sometimes poking through, which makes it a bit harder for the lace to stick. But once it gets all nice and stuck, I'm just going to go ahead and repeat the same process throughout the rest of the lace. And pro tip, working in sections really does help you make sure you're getting everything to lay nice and flat. Once I've completed laying my lace down all around, I'm just putting this elastic band over my lace to help hold it down and just help make sure everything is nice and dry before I proceed to do my baby hairs because I don't want any lifting, especially with this glueless install child. Now what I'm doing while my lace is laying, I'm just going in and starting to carve out the part. I knew I wanted to do a deep side part. Y'all see how much space I have? Like, wow. I'm always so impressed whenever I get a frontal with deep space partying, like on the side, you know? Doesn't happen quite often very much. Anyways, getting the side part was really going to be the death of me. The way it took me about an hour to finally, like, be satisfied with the way the side part was looking. I am literally looking at a Pinterest inspo photo that I have. I always like to look at photos whenever I'm doing my hair to give me some inspiration and to kind of give me a guide of exactly what I'm doing because trust me y'all, I don't know what I'm doing as well, okay? We're all just clueless. 
But once I've got the part parted out, I'm using my hot comb to help press out everything. This is like my pre-press because I'm definitely going to go back in later and do more pressing. But I like to just press out the hairline one time at first to kind of help push everything so I know, you know, how to shape my baby hairs. Pro tip for all my naturally clumsy people to help you not burn your head the way I always do. I Now I like to push my elastic band exactly over the lace where the hot comb sometimes touches my forehead. That way that kind of acts as a barrier to help me just, you know, reduce the chances of burning up my forehead. Now I'm just parting out the places that I'm going to use for my baby hairs and I sprayed a little bit of that ebon lace spray on top of the baby hair section to help get it to lay down nice and flat. You can also use your hot comb for this part but honestly I always burn myself doing that so using the ebon spray works just as well. Here I'm also just kind of like doing like a pre-swoop to see if the hairs are going to lay the way that I want this thing to. Once I got the hair to lay the way that I wanted to I put the elastic band back on and here I'm using my mini curling iron, I'm sorry, flat iron. This is a one inch or half an inch, I believe. I got this from Amazon, don't worry, I'll link it down below. And I'm just using that to curl the baby hairs. And this kind of just helps the hair, the baby hairs lay a bit better when you curl them. It's not a must you get this. I definitely don't always use this, but whenever I use it, I find that it makes the baby hair swoop a little bit easier. I'm also using my um, razor comb that I got from the beauty supply store to help me cut off the hairs. I cut it exactly where the curl ends, if that makes sense. And I like to use this razor comb because it helps give me a jagged cut which makes the baby hairs, you know, just lay in a more feathery look. One thing you don't want to do is when you're chopping, when you're cutting your baby hairs, you don't want to cut them straight across just like how you don't cut your lace straight across. Same concept because it's just not going to lay as like natural. To help me swoop and lay the baby hairs, I'm going in with this Eco Styling Gel. I like using this product because it helps give the hair some hold, but at the same time, it's not like too much of a hold where I'm still able to brush it out once it all sets and get a nice, you know, fluffy, natural look with it. When it comes to laying your baby hairs, the only advice I, advice I can really give is just be patient. Use your finger to like hold where it needs to be hold and like, if you've ever done finger waves you get the gist the same way you do your baby hairs is really the same thing so i'm just trying to look at the inspo picture and just swoop the hairs the way i wanted to swoop and also as well i'm using these cuticle scissors to help taper the cut because you don't want the well for me i don't like when the hair is all the same length so i like to make sure the hair at the front is shorter and it gets longer as it joins back into the hairline Now I'm going to go ahead and just apply that same elastic band to my baby hairs over the lace to help, you know, get the baby hairs to dry down and to hold down the lace while I do my styling. So if you really want your wigs to come out flat, flat, you know, what you got to do instead of doing the normal hot combing where we just, you know, hot comb over the part, you got to go in section by section and use that hot comb and press it down like really take your time to press i've realized taking my time and going in section by section really makes a big difference like the wig ends up super duper flat 
I also will be using a bit of my Kara Care Wax Stick to help me with any flyaways and to help press the hair. But one thing I've learned is when you use like hair wax, don't use it on every section. Use it sparingly because whenever I use too much of this hair wax, the hair starts to get very greasy. So it'll be light handed. I honestly really just use it towards the top sections and just try to make sure I'm focusing on pressing down the other sections. Ooh, finally, I can get into the styling. Styling is my favorite part because it's literally so easy. It's really just straightforward for me. Here I'm showing you guys exactly how long this hair was and boy she was long. I'm 5'2 and this hair came down to past my butt, like honestly mid butt crack I would say. Here I'm just cutting some layers and chopping the dead ends to help the hair look more full towards the end and I just want to add very light layers to the hair. Lucifer and his forces are attacking me at this very moment. Oh, y'all see that? Yeah, it's giving. Oh, yes. It's giving. It's like a giant. Okay, quick check-in, y'all. I'm tired. Ooh. You know what's so crazy? Let me tell you what time this is. It's almost 3 a.m. So in theory, I've been doing this for 10 hours. And it really shouldn't take me that long. I just get so anxious when it comes to doing hair these days. Like... I feel like I just gotta, you know, one TikTok sound, you know, I just put my best, I'm gonna find it and place it. I just don't like to put no scrubs out there. So now I put so much pressure on myself to really make sure I slay these wigs for y'all. You know, I don't know. Literally took me like low key two hours just getting this part the way I want it, you know? But, anyways, I'm glad I'm finally getting to the styling portion. This part is pretty straightforward. I don't do crimps often, but I'm going to start doing them. Like, I really like them. Especially if they help give, like, a little body wave. And I got this crimper from Amazon, literally, like, $25. I think it's even, like, on sale at Walmart for, like, $20 or something. But this is good stuff. Quality. And I don't like really stiff crimps, so I feel like it's the perfect size. Anyways, I'm now watching... Is the hair burning? I think I got too hot. Let's turn the heat down. I'm now watching. That was an ugly crap. So now I started. I just started the show while I'm doing my hair. It's called God's Favorite Idiot. It's on Netflix, guys. The show is actually hilarious. Starting the show has been helping give me a little bit of energy because like I'm over here just laughing. It's really funny. It's a limited series. I'm so bad at giving y'all synopsis, synopsis, but if you're someone who has like, you know, a dark sense of humor or you just like to laugh, love a good little feel good show, this is definitely it for y'all. I love it. And if you watched it, comment down below. Anyways, back to this cramping. Oh, and these curls, these this little this is giving. Oh dang, I forgot to spray heat protectant on this section. I'm trying to get sloppy, but I'm tired. What exactly is the message that I'm supposed to get out there? Shamuel was a little light on the details. I need you to let people know that God is real and God is good, and everybody, meaning all religions, are actually quite right about God. Also, nobody's really wrong. I'm okay with all favors unless you'll fall crazy train or use my name to hurt people. So, you let everyone know that, and then I want to know what people say. Great. I, I can try to do that. Good. The world is at a tipping point, Clark. There's far too much bad mojo out there, and my battery is running low. Either we get the message out there and people love one another and respect one another more, my whoop Lucifer's ass, or... We don't do that, and he'll whoop mine. What? <laughs> uh, no, can we do it the first way? People don't really want my help anymore. Maybe I'll stop giving it. It's not much use. 
putting out a fire if the homeowner keeps lighting a match, is there? Hey guys, it's the next day. Okay, so I've already had already put the wig back on. Um, the finishing touches I wanna do is, I'm gonna use this um, Cover Your Gray. It's like a, a little, it's a product that's meant to cover like your gray, like gray hair, if you have gray hair. But I like using it to just help cover up parts that I over bleach. It's basically like mascara, you can use mascara. I got this from Resupply Store, but I'm just gonna go ahead and fix some over bleach spots with this to clean it up okay another finishing touch I'm gonna add is I'm gonna use some concealer in the part to just make it really pop and this is the LA Pro Girl OG concealer in the shade warm honey I use warm honey or fawn it's like you know see it's a much lighter tone than me it's my highlight shade I'm just gonna pop that in the part Here we are with the finished product. Went ahead and did my makeup a little bit because going out to get a little cute. I have to use my phone a lot of the time to show you guys the final products. You can see the full length of the hair because the way my setup is right now, I can never get the full hair in camera, especially not 30 inches. You can see this hair is super long, but this look was really cute. I even did my part on the different, I always do my part on the other side, but I was trying to change it up and JK, I'm sticking to my side. I have my side and I'm sticking to that side only. Anyhow, I rambled too much, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And let me guys know how you guys are feeling about these longer start to finish installs. I know this video is super long, but to be honest, this install took me about two and a half to three days. So I'm just trying to be realistic and show you guys just how much work and effort it goes into slaying a lot of these wigs that we see all over the internet. But no, seriously, if you're liking these longer videos, let me know because I'll make more of them. If you're like, no, Caroline, I need something short and quick and snappy, but let me know because I'll make more of those too. I'm here for you guys. But again, thank you so much for watching. You know the drill. Like, comment, and subscribe. See you in other ones. Peace out, Girl Scouts, and goodbye. different